All right, this is the Chaz Palmateri Show on YouTube, Spotify, Google. Uh, what else? John, what else? YouTube, Spotify, Google. Apple. And, and Apple, that's right. Don't forget, you want to see my one-man show, go to chazpalmateri.net. Dot net. I will be at the Richfield Playhouse June 4th in Richfield, Connecticut. Uh, then I'll be at the Paramount Theater, the Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York. And uh, that is when, that is June 11th. June 11th and June 23rd, I'm going to be in Dover, Delaware at the Rollins Theater, the casino there. Check it out. But if you want to see where I am, net. And don't forget, June is the month, one month a year. For three days, I teach my master class on how to audition. All the actors out there. On the 8th, on the 7th, 8th, and 9th of June, go to one on one uh, nyc.com and join if you like to uh, uh, come to the class. That's one on one. And uh, we got a great show today. A really great show. We got this guy. I saw him. He's hysterical. He's funny. He's bright. He's been a headliner for many, many years. Uh, what can I say about him? You probably know him. He's been on TV. He's been all over. Rich Voss, how well, are you, brother? Well, thank you for having me. This is amazing sitting in here in this museum, and I look around, <laughs> and I realize all the wrong decisions I made in life. Uh, <laughs> but let me tell you, the Ridgefield Playhouse, I love that place. Great place. It's, and it's, so, it's right here. It's right here. Allison doesn't work there anymore. She was the lady that ran it. That's right. Yeah, she was great. I love that place. That's right, and, yes. Uh, great audience. Uh, very waspy, but great audience. Right. <laughs> I mean, I, you but know. But they get the jokes. No, they get it. They it's get it. the jokes, man. You know, I, take, I hide my star of David when I go there. But, no, it's one of my favorite places. It's yes. really nice. It really is, uh, yes. This is, I, you know, uh, we did a scene once. That's right. Uh, we did a scene on, on then it's, it was Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony, From that's a Bronx right. Tale. How many years ago was that? Oh, well, those guys, had, they ago. moved to obscurity. So right. that was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was when you were allowed to say stuff back then. Back then, you're you right. know. Yeah. Uh, I deny everything now. Yes. Yeah, I deny that. That wasn't me. That wasn't you. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, but here, I'll tell you. Well, I'm gonna, should I tell the story real quick? Absolutely tell the story. We first met. Uh, I used to do this show, and their, one of their co-hosts, uh, Jim Norton, who was best man at my wedding, good friend of mine, we used to argue who was a worse actor. This is how bad I am. <laughs> I was. Okay. I remember... I. I've had anxiety throughout my whole life, but when I was in my 40s, I had a really bad one. My, I, I would watch my daughters every, my ex-wife had them at nights and I would have them in the days. Then I would work nights. Right. My, so my life was my daughters really, not moving to LA after certain things. And How many daughters do you have? I have uh, two older daughters and a 16 year old. Oh. Uh, that is, that brings nothing to the table. Anyhow, I mean, I love her dearly. She's really? the sweetest. Uh, she's 16, 15, going to be 16. So my daughters went off. I was watching them every day. And then they got older and I went to school. And, I, right. and I'm bouncing off of walls. My anxiety is, what am I going to do now? So I get this big festival for comedy, Aspen Con. I had all this heat up at the festival. Because they never saw someone like me. You know, I mean, I was a brace, whatever. Yes. I work in the moment. You know, there was a guy in the audience. This is a big comedy festival. A guy in the audience looked like Spielberg. I go, you Spielberg? I go, I don't know if you are or not, but I'll blow you just in case. You know, (laughs) whatever. So, you know, they just, and they're going, who is this guy? Because the industry really didn't, but I was already doing comedy for 13, 15 years, but the industry really didn't know me because I was on the road. So right. I was on the road, and now I'm in front of, and I got this, I mean, the head of Disney is coming up to me. Right. We love you. We don't know what to do with you. I'm sure you've heard that. I've heard We that, don't know yeah. what to do with you. Right. But we, uh, so I, next thing you know, one night, they go, we want you to go on after Sinbad, before Carlin, in between them. At the at this at the Wheeler Opera House and right. the anxiety. Next thing you know, I'm having an anxiety attack. I thought it was a heart attack, but it was an anxiety attack. Right. I'm I'm on you know the ambulance is there. Uh, I'm in the dress room. You know, oxygen. You know, one I can't breathe. It's fucking Aspen. And Carlin goes, "Don't worry, I've had two heart attacks." 
and it, which now I'm thinking it's really a heart attack. Wow. <laughs> Anyhow, I, so I had all this anxiety. I come back and I'm getting all these auditions. You know, for, and I'm, I'm a comic. I'm really not an actor. Right. So my agent at the time, I goes, we want you to read for something. I go, I can't do it. I, I, you'll be fine. Listen, I can't do this, right? Right. She goes, just go in. So I'm reading, I think for the head of Fox or casting. Right. You could see the sides of my hand shake. Yeah. I mean. That's very yeah, good, but you're yeah. not alone in that. She called, they called my management and said, we can never see him again, <laughs> right? right. I, I, I didn't care, I'm a cop. So me and Norton used to argue who was the worst actor. Right. You know, at the time, back then. So I get a call the night before from the producer of Opium. We want you to, you and Norton to do a scene from the Bronx, a Bronx tale together. I go, okay, send me the sides. I go, we'll give them to you in the morning. I get there, there's two microphones set up. They hand me the, they go, all right, during commercial break, you and Norton, after commercial break, you and Norton will go up and read a scene and we'll see who's right. the worst actor. Right. So I'm standing there at the mic. They come back from commercial break. And Norton's still sitting down. I go, come on, stupid. Let's do this scene and get it over with. Right. And all of a sudden, then you come walking in, and I have to do the scene with you. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they surprised you. Yeah, they surprised. I yeah, didn't and know they surprised, I mean, I didn't know I was going to do the scene. Yeah, so it, it didn't go. It kind of, I had flashbacks of when I read at Fox or wherever it was. That was so, fine. As an actor, like here's for me as a comic. For you, would you rather have more respect from your peers or the industry? Oh, oh, oh the industry. Oh, my peers. Yeah, right. Without a doubt. Yeah, without yes. a doubt. Your without peers. a doubt, my peers, yeah. yes. Yeah. And I, I said it to comics and some comics. And when you're gone, all you have left or you leave behind is what, you know, what you built yeah. in your, yeah. the industry doesn't give a shit about you anymore. You're dead. You're dead. Yeah, yeah. you're dead. Yeah. So I know, to me, respect in life for everything right. trumps the other shit. I agree. Yeah. You know, I think it trumps the other shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah I think it does. You know. Because that's, that's everlasting. You know. Yeah. And, and when I walk, and just like you, I'm 100% sure, when you walk, if you walked into a room full of actors, actors, whatever, right? They were, wow, look who's here! You know, you know, yeah. so, you know. I just think because your peers know what's good, yeah. And I'm not knocking the industry. Out the industry, you wouldn't, no, no, wouldn't make the, money. But, you know, the industry is different. The industry is. It's not about. It's really not about. Uh, it, it's not about. Um, the industry is more about who's hot. At the time, yeah, it's really not about the craft, you know. And for me, for me, the craft is everything. Is everything? Yeah. Like, I don't care. I, like, there's an old saying: Would you rather be a hit in a shit or a shit in a hit? You know. Yeah. And, and I, I and I would rather be I would rather be great in a movie that doesn't do well that doesn't do well than be bad in a movie that does well. Yeah. I know that sounds crazy. But it's it's really the way I feel, and yes. I know. Uh, and again, anyway, just I want to talk about you, but I know yeah. I'm good, and I know that I can never be bad. I can know a movie cannot work, but I could. I just know, you know, it's yeah. it's a feeling, it's a confidence that I have in me, just like you. I could say to you, Rich, get on stage. There's ten thousand people there. Would you do me a favor? Could you get on there and just do a little something? You'd be like, yeah, all right, yeah, fucking, you know, not even bad an eye. Yeah, not many people could do that. Go on stage, yes. five thousand people, and all of a sudden now you got to talk. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> what do you mean here? I got to talk. Yeah, I, it's. I was in. Uh, well, I mean, look, I I could do. I've done, you know, shows, hosted shows with ten thousand people in the audience. I hosted Woodstock '99, that that documentary they wow, just had. Yeah. I was one of the hosts on one of the stages. I've done rooms with 20 people where I've had as much fun yeah. as anywhere. Yeah. Because what it is, is I love doing what I do. Right. And, you know, and all of it comes down to, in my life, is because, you know, and I, I don't want to sound preachy, but because I'm sober now. Right. 37 years. 37 years. Yeah. 
Now, I, before we get into that, I just got to know, you weren't born a comic. How did this happen? How did you become a comic? I failed at everything else. Uh, growing up. <laughs> no, no, that's oh, no. legitimate. Well, like, no. Well, I'm you just to... feel like, this is really what I want to do. Well, growing up as a kid, I, I was in fourth grade, so I guess maybe it's not, and I didn't figure this out till later in life. I guess I was, what, nine, ten years old. I would come home from school every day, and I would listen to this comic, Von Meter, who did the impressions of the Kennedys. Right. He had an album, The First Family. He was the hottest comic until they got assassinated. Then nobody. And I would come home every day and just listen to it, sit by. Then you had a record player, remember? Right, the big right, record. right. And, and, le and then it, later on, I realized my parents were going through a divorce. My father was never around. And I was right. just covering the pain with, with comedy, comedy back then. Yeah, I didn't know. I was yeah. fucking 10 years old. So, so growing up through life, listening to prior and yeah. we would you know back then we would get high and just sit up in my friend's room and listen to comedy albums right. and even as a kid when my father was around i would watch you know ed sullivan and alan king would be right, on alan or something king. and i as a kid i'm going this is the funniest man alive yeah so then uh you know i used i, I had a big business you know before i i used to re paint houses i had a big i was 23 years old and i had eight guys working for me wow. nine, but i was doing drugs so i didn't you know i mean yeah. it, it it failed i was in sales i did everything right that somebody that got high would do right so yeah. they could still get high i know so i remember a guy i was getting one of my particular drugs from at the time we went to a comedy club, Catch a Rising Star in New York. I remember that. And I saw, I go, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And then I went to another comedy club in Jersey. I go, I have to do this. You know, so I wrote, I remember, I wish I still had it. And maybe I do something. I wrote like eight pages with a pencil, you know, and it was horrific. Yeah, it's yeah. like that with everybody, yeah. My friend, these guys I know had a band. And they go, you want to go up during our first break? Oh, Jesus. And I, I never done comedy. And I went up. I had props. I saw I saw this guy, Lenny Schultz, somewhere. Lenny Schultz. I saw him. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. I, I, I'm very rare. Does anybody else ever yeah. bring him up? More pigs, Lenny. So I saw Lenny. I go, this guy, he has all these props. And yes. Stuff. I go, that's comedy. Right? I go, wow. I could. Do. So I went to Toys R Us, and I just started buying shit. I had no jokes. Right. <laughs> I went up, and it was a nightmare. And I go, I got to keep doing And I kept doing it and doing it. Then I booked a couple rooms by my house. Right. You know, just one-nighters. Right. So I could host and get on stage. And I would hire other comics. Right. And there was guys like me, like in Connecticut or Long right. Island, that were booking rooms. So we would trade. Nice. So I get to work their rooms. I would go on the road. I remember... Uh, uh, going to Texas and Virginia for 125 a week to host back then. And then uh, I guess I had three years in. And then uh, I put myself in rehab, uh, you know, because it just got out of hand from, you know, the yeah. from the party into next thing you know, you're up in Spanish Harlem with guns, you know, pointed yeah, yeah, exactly, at you. Exactly, yeah. So you're, I'm like, I can't, I, either I die or I get clean. So I was in rehab, and they go, you got to quit comedy for a year. Cause it's out. The day I got to rehab, I did comedy that night at a club. Because for drugs and alcohol for me, I completely surrendered. I lost. But I knew I still loved doing comedy. And it just grew. You know, wow. I had an ego. I remember, and it's not, e for some reason, some agent says something to me. I go, look, I'm going to, I know I'm going to do well in this. I know I'm good. You just knew. Yeah, right. I just knew. Yeah, yeah. From where I grew up, I grew up in a, you know, uh, I guess a really mixed name. You know, the front of my house, I lived on the corner, was white and mixed people. Yeah. And the back street was all or black people. So I was in, I never felt, but I was always hanging down that street. Right. Uh, because there were more kids like me. And I'm not being, uh, it's just how it was. It was, more broken homes, yeah. more dudes that would hang out at night. Right. So I grew up amongst so many different people that, and and in my life, I knew 
I just knew people. Right. And, and, and okay, now as a comic, I'm growing because I have kids. I have that to talk about. Married, divorced, sober, drug addict was not anymore. Right, you know? So you really got to, I mean, I, and I say this to you, for the people listening out there, your life really didn't come together until you got yourself sober. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, so that's like, that's like a, an absolute lesson to people out there. You could, might be doing well, and you could be getting high and drunk, but sooner or later, it's going to crash. Oh, it, there's, there's, look, there's a fine line between social use and addiction. Right. And once you cross that line, there's no turning back. Like my wife will drink. She's a social drinker. And I, I like it because it's easier to take advantage of her. Yeah. But, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, there, there's, there's no turning back. My life, not, like, I couldn't get high now because when I was getting high, I had no money. This watch here would kill me. Would kill it, you. it would kill me. You if I have, sold this, I would have enough have to, to die. You would have to sell it. I would yeah. have enough to die from just this watch. Yeah, right. So I, I can't, look, I'm a, an addictive person. Right. I can't, you know, I go to, you know, I'm, I'm, this is day, what's day, Wednesday, day three of not doing scratch offs, lottery, you know. Right. Uh, so you, it's been 37 years. Yeah. But, you know, I'm, I, listen, I'm, I, I'm addicted to anything that makes me feel good. Right. Instant gratification. So comedy is perfect for you then. Oh, yeah. It's, that's why I act like, wow. Now your, wife's a, now your wife's a comic, right? Comic, writer, director. She's pretty, uh, what the hell is that like living with two with two people who are comics? I never even heard of that. Well, the good thing is we have separate bedrooms. Uh, so <laughs> after sex, I'm like, hey, look, you uh, you got to run. Uh, and I always <laughs> give her one of my CDs as a parting gift. I go take one of these. Uh, we, I could not be married to a dentist. You know, I mean, what am no. I going to talk? You know, where look? But how we, do you both work at night? You both work at night. She doesn't go. She works weekends more in New York, and I'm on the no, road. Let's give your wife a shout out. What's her name? Bonnie McFarlane. Bonnie she, McFarlane. I've heard of her. We, uh, we, you know, we made a movie together, a doc that did really well, a comedy called "Women Aren't Funny," and we, uh, you know, it was on Netflix before Netflix was hot for two yeah, years. Right, right. Right. It's on. It's still on iTunes. Women. I mean, we had every major comic because I know Chris Rock, Rosie O'Donnell, right. Artie Lang, uh, all right. uh, Sarah Silverman. We had everybody. This doc is funny. Women aren't funny. Right. We have the best roast. She she put it together. We have a roast that we put up, up on YouTube for free called Voss Roast. You know, I mean, she hosted it. Colin Quinn, Bobby Kelly, Jim Norton, Judy. I mean, this. I'm hands down. If you like roasts, this is the best roast you'll ever see. Better than anything. Comedy I, Central. I love roasts. Uh, go to Voss Roast on. I mean, there's a lot of inside shit too. Yeah, right. But right. I love roasts. Uh, listen, yeah. I. I mean, there. It, it, it's up there with any Dean Martin roast. Believe yeah, wow. me. Wow. Yeah. It'll. It, everybody. It's it's one of the best roasts in here. And I'm not saying it because it's me. Now, when people when, when people come over your house for dinner and you, and you and your wife for dinner. Uh, do you and your wife like make, I crack you? Like some comics they're on all the time, some comics are not. No. How, how about both of you? Well, we're buying a house now because she's making me. So she's, I have no filter. No filter. Like I, and she does. Like we're with the real, uh, real estate right. agent. Right. You know, who, if I, is very attractive. And I say things I'm not supposed to, or, right. you know, and she, you know, oh, oh, oh. and I mean, I, not whatever. Well, you, you know, know we yeah. go into a store. I'll say, like, I'll say to a waitress, "Look, not all the time, because I really am pro blue collar work. I never mean yeah, the blue collar careful, workers, because yeah. I was a blue and right. They're, of they're, but I will say every now and then to a waitress or waiter, use your real voice, and I'll give you a bigger tip. You know, right. you know, just yeah. as it, uh, you know, I don't need that high. I'm not four years old, uh, so she has a filter." But together, if we're with comics, and it's just me and her together, we're brutal. We're two attack. We're bad cop, bad cop together oh. amongst other comics. Yeah, I can see that. Sure, we're. we're yeah. I mean, 
look, if you if you're that thin, if you're thin skin, you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong. You're, you're in the wrong you're business. Right. If you yeah. the the one thing about comics I always known uh, I always th- uh, saw was, and I'm not a comic, of course, but I'm an actor, and I, if I say something funny, they'll never laugh. They'll just go, "That's funny." Yeah, comic. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny, but they won't laugh. It, it's very <laughs> it's very seldom, unless we're really going at it and. Comics on comics. Yeah. Sometimes we'll say, like, uh, may you rest in peace, one of my good friends, Patrice O'Neill, who let, passed. Let me tell you something. I never realized how great that guy was till he was gone. Yeah. Uh, He's, he was great. We, I mean, we have... Right. I headlined his funeral. Anyhow, yeah. uh, no, uh, his memorial. Uh, we There was times we would laugh together, and he had such, yeah. such a... Uh, what do you call it? Electric laugh. I mean, just yeah, yeah. Same with, uh, like I do radio a lot, and this is a name dropping with with Gervais, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, such a laugh, Funny. such a laugh right. that that just takes over the room. Yeah, and I, we, yeah. I, I love comics. Yeah. I I because I, I love the idea yeah. of just watching them work. You know, uh, uh, I mean, Chris DiStefano is one of my favorite yeah. comics. He's great. A good friend with Chris and. So many other guys have been on the show. Bill Burr's coming on the show, which I can't wait. To me, he's like, like, uh, like overrated. Oh, you know, no, I'm no, <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? We no, did. I think he's, I think he's like the Richard Pryor of this generation. I know yes. I might be a little. No, you're not. Say no, but I, I really do, and I like uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, you know, obviously Dave Chappelle. Yeah. But there's a lot of great comics. I mean, all you guys are great. Well, Bill, Bill, and mainly Bill, for the last ten years, we did a. The Patrice benefit. Yeah, uh, we just did it. You know, we ra- raised money for his mom, and yeah, right. He, I host every year, and yeah. he closes every year. Wow, yeah. And it's funny because we just did it like maybe three or four weeks ago, and yeah. he, uh, Billy, said to me, uh, "You and I have the most ungrateful parts of the show. I have to host it, go out, and he has to close it, and." And I think I wanted to say to well, him, mine wouldn't be ungrateful if maybe you gave me a watch or something. Okay, <laughs> you can make mine be grateful. You'll yeah. be on your own as yeah. ungrateful. But he, Billy was in our crew. He yeah. was part of our crew. Wow. It was me, Patrice, this guy Keith Robinson, Bobby Kelly, Jim Norton, uh, yeah. Kevin Hart. Keith brought Kevin Hart to our crew. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. It's a funny story. We were, uh, Kevin Hart was moving to California from New York. So at Boston Comedy Club, it was a little club. He had his like going away show or whatever. Right, right. So me, Patrice, and another comic, Keith Robinson, are sitting in the back of the room. Right. And stupid Kevin's up there pontificating. I'm going to mention, and we're like, ugh. And for some reason, there was like 10 phone books in the back of the room. Yeah. And when he was up, we just started heaving phone books at him <laughs> at the stage. And throwing, I said, I'm going to yeah. miss you guys. Boom, a phone book <laughs> would wow. land. And wow. and he always brings it up. He, right. he says, he goes, I know I was, ex- this is the biggest comic in the, I mean, besides Chappelle, you know, yeah. he's a movie star well, he's, now. He's co- yeah. Commercially, he's yeah. the biggest. He's yeah. the big. He, he said, I knew I was accepted when, Patrice Voss and Keith were throwing phone books at me. Yeah. And that's when he knew he was part of the crew. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh so we had the I mean the strongest comics hanging together. Colin Quinn, who's one of the best comics one of the ever. Best. Well, I just saw his show. It's amazing. Uh Every, if you ever get a chance to yeah. see Colin's show, it's fucking great. He puts great. out he puts out a one man, a one person show. Yes. Every I try to write two jokes in a year. He has a new goddamn show. Yeah. And they're great. always amazing. Yeah. Fabulous. I, yeah. Fabulous. We we went to see it. and Colin's one of my favorite people. But I mean, they're all good friends. Yeah. But they're all great. And if you hang out with great, oh, you can only get good because they'll you call can only you. Get good. They'll call you on your shit. We used to sit around. Yeah. We used to sit around with the comics and play. It was called hack hack court. And if we thought one of your bits were hacky or horrible, yeah. we'd bring it up and just rip you to pieces right, right, until you right. dropped it. So I, I was, I, you know, I landed with a with a good crew, and I yeah. got lucky by that. You know, if you were hanging out with all actors all that every night, yeah, 
obviously you would try to be with the best who I yeah well, I, you know, I like working with great actors I mean because yeah. I, I I'm when you're very confident in yourself I, I if I'm in a movie or a scene with a great actor I want him to be great yeah because I know how good I am I want you to be great yeah I'm not worried about you I want you to be great because uh, it's like ping pong you know let's yeah. go back and forth man yeah it's like I would rather follow a good comic on stage than right. a bad comic. I don't want to have to get him back. Yeah. I'll tell you, here's... You know, it's funny. I, I asked Chris Rock once, who I know. I did yeah. a movie with, and I know Chris well, and I, and I love Chris. And I asked him, I said, who's the toughest comic to follow? And you'll never believe who he said. He goes, the toughest comic that everyone hates to follow. And I said, who is it? He goes, Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, That's what he said yeah. to me. I said, why is that? He goes, because he's just rapid fire. Yeah, he just goes. And you got to go up after him. He goes, no, I could do it. He goes, but if you're asking me that question, it was Rodney Dangerfield. Well, I, I did a, okay, so during the, we roast, there was a Trump roast at, after the Friars broke away from Comedy Central, the Friars still did their roast at right. the Hilton. So they were roasting Trump. Right. I was on the roast. 2,000 people in the audience at the Hilton. Right. Everybody in New York that was anybody. My soon-to-be wife was there, Opie and Anthony in the, right. in the stands. Everybody. I'm sitting next to Isaac Hayes on the dais. This old comic goes up first, Stewie Stone, and just, he's an old Friars comic, just yeah. slaughters. Trump. Slaughter, kills, I mean, just kills, does so well. Yeah. Then Susie Essman goes on. From uh, Curbs, yeah, kills, and I'm on. I go. I'm gonna fucking end my career tonight. I'm. I'm going. I'm gonna bomb this. I. I can't follow this. Right. I go. I'm done. And then another comic went on, and he did okay. Yeah. So I'm next. Well, Regis Fulman was the host, and it was a a month after Dangerfield passed away. Yeah. And I walk on. And a big hand for Regis. And I go, originally, they asked Rodney to host, but he said he'd rather be dead. Oh, <laughs> so, gosh. Silence. <laughs> Some laughs. But then I got the audience. Right. Okay. And, it was, you know, a, a comic would like, wouldn't mind. Anyhow, the one joke I did, and I'm not political by any sense, uh, the lawyer Michael Cohen or something. He was. He wrote a book. I don't know. Right. He right. he quoted my joke. This is back. Now this is seventeen, eighteen years ago. Right. I said the reason Trump puts his names on his buildings so the banks knew which ones to take back. Right. And that was on a roast. Eighteen years ago. Uh, so anyhow, uh, you're talking about Chris, and it's funny. Chris Rock is wanted, and I've worked with him on so many projects. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's great. He's great. And I just love watching him go through his process. Right, and, right. So I wrote for him on two Oscars. Uh, one of the right, not, right. I mean, there was a bunch of us. Yeah. But so I, I was on a show. I had one scene years ago on the show American Dreams. It was about American Bandstand in the 60s. Right. It, was two, it lasted two years. So I have a scene where I'm playing Lenny Bruce and the star of the show and and the co-star are in the audience and they're going, oh, that's Lenny Bruce. And I'm doing this scene, whatever. And it went it went well. During the rehearsals, I thought they were going to fire me. But once right. the cameras were rolling, right, right, right. I fucking knocked. So anyhow, I'm backstage at the Oscars. Right. Dustin Hoffman is talking to Barbara Streisand. I walk over. With my back to Barbara Streisand, and look at Dustin Hoffman and go, I also played Lenny Bruce. I compared my four lines to his Oscar nominating performance as Lenny, and I walked away. I go, I hate myself. How do I turn my back to Barbara Streisand and then compare myself to fucking Dustin Hoffman? I go, what a jackass. Well, why did you do that? Because I wanted to connect with him and say, well, oh, this is what Jesus. we have in common. I didn't know. Right, I, always, right, right. I, didn't, I said, well, and then I go, well, actually, 
I play. I said to him, I actually played you playing Lenny. Oh, okay. and then he said thank you, yeah. and I walked away. I didn't know what. What do you say to you know? Yeah, to, right, I, right, I, right. I don't know what to say. I mean, this was also fifteen years ago. Right. Now I would go, you know, I stood right. out. I was outside Stand Up New York one night, and Robin Williams walks out. Yeah. And I go, where do I know you from? You know, that's yeah. something I would say now. Yeah, you right, know, right, right, right. Because I have confidence. Yeah. I had, yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I know Robin very well. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I know Robin very well, yes. But I, he I, he started laughing. I go, where do I know you from? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's. Now he was a good actor for a comic. He was a great actor. Really great actor. I directed yeah. him in a movie. Oh yeah, oh, it was, and he was uh, he was a terrific actor, but it's true. A lot of comics, so I shouldn't say a lot. Like Jerry Seinfeld's a great comic. Yeah, really can't act. Can't, and he knows yeah. it. He says yeah. it. Yeah, he knows it. He says well, it, you know. He, for for me, if I have like we were in, we had a scene, uh, my wife and I in a movie King of Staten Island. Uh, yeah, oh, I, I never saw it. Yes. Yeah, so we had a scene in it. And Judd was the director, Apatow. Yeah. He let us ad lib. Do stay well, stay in smart. stay in the structure of what's written. Oh, what are you gonna but say? You, right. So if I'm ad libbing, I'm not worried about anything. You could put ten cameras on. Exactly. It. If they let me ad lib, once I gotta learn those st- those lines. Well, that's you it. Know, that's why I you teach know. a class. Yeah. Because I've seen great actors who cannot, actors cannot audition. Can't. They get too nervous. It, they, yes. get, they get really caught up in the dialogue. Uh, they think of too many things. And uh, I've seen it. So that's why I start, I've been doing this like 10 years now, a master class. Because I just saw it. I said, this is ridiculous. How can exactly. you not look? You know, but it's a technique. Auditioning is a separate technique from acting. Well, it, it's not natural. It's not natural. It's no. not natural at all because you're sitting. You're. Re- I remember when I read. Okay, I read for Sopranos, a little part, whatever yeah. you know, and they liked me. I didn't get the part, but they right. called me back in. So I'm reading with what I, you know her. I'm the first one in to read that day. Yeah. I I don't know. And I wasn't good enough to handle this, but she started reading my lines. I'm going, what the fuck is going on? She was reading your lines for you to mimic her? No, she just was out of it. Wow. She was reading my line. I go, well, well." and then it, I think it it didn't go as well because I didn't know how to ad lib my way through it. Or back at the time. I got you. Oh, no, she didn't want me to ad lib. She just screwed up. She screwed up. Yeah. And then she didn't. Say let's do it. I, whatever. It just was a nightmare. Wow. Now I would handle it different. You know, you you grow in life as everything. Yeah, sure. But you know, you know, for me, like I said, you know, I'm a comic. Everything else I get, if it's acting or anything, is a bonus. It's it's a yeah. bonus for me right. because that's you know, uh, it. I see. I, I watch these. You know shows or movies i go man how do they do it you know i'm going to actors i'm going i say to my wife all the time you know how do they learn that many lines to do that scene yes. it's i mean i'm talking pages pages of dialogue without an edit and you're going i'm thinking that that's how can that be it, done it's like you it's just yeah. you just do it you practice I, my one man show is 90 minutes on stage 90 pages of dialogue. Oh, it's insane. Do you, it's, yeah. it, and it's not like something you're going to go off topic or go off. Uh, well, no, you, you got to pretty much, it's a story. It's Bronx yeah. Tale, yeah. the story. Yeah. You know? So you got to, I mean, if you, you could, could you mess up a sentence and nobody knows? Yeah. Yeah. You could do that, but you got to stay with the dialogue. You got to. Oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. could, I mean, memorize, I watch these. You know, the, but it's what everybody. It's what you do. It's yeah. Well, just getting up there and talking to people, ad living. Yeah. I mean, shit. You know, you got to give yeah. me something to talk about here. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I guess. I mean, I could do like stand up. Is I could lay on the couch with my eyes closed and do an hour. Right. But yeah, you know, you know it's just the art. It it it. Either way, like I think stand up. People, what gets me is so many people. I can do stand up. No, you you can't. No, you, can you go. Can't. You can't. But I'm really funny. You might be funny. funny. Yeah. With your family. Yeah. 
you know, and you probably are funny because yeah. they get all your jokes. Oh, you should do stand up. It's a whole different animal. Yeah, get up it's... there to talk to twenty strangers late at night in a yeah. room. Make them laugh. Listen, or when I, you know, on the road, you know, there's three hundred people in the audience or whatever, and the, the act before me, you know, is lighting himself on fire, and they love him. And then I got to yeah. go on, and then twenty five minutes into my set, they drop the checks. You know, yeah. so now I got to still hold the audience. Got to hold the audience as right. they're looking at their fucking bills. You right. know, it's and, and that's not all places. You know, and there's theaters, but it's you know it it it's I, I, so different. It's, it's so different. I like what I like studying comics. I love studying yeah. them because I watch because I'm a comedy writer too, obviously, yeah. and I I like to study them and, and say, wow, he made that bit work. And it, you know, there was a comic. Um, in, a nice guy. I was at a wedding. Was it a wedding? No, it was a charity. Uh, and, on, and, and, and and Rich, and there was a comic there, Bobby Collins. Bobby I, Collins. Yeah. Okay. So he says, he comes over to me, he goes, yeah. I said, hey, how you doing? We, we met a couple. He goes, yeah, I got to go up and do 15 minutes or something. And I said, now in this crowd? Yeah. Because it was like really like very boisterous Italian yeah. people, a charity. And I'm going, holy shit, yeah. this is death. He gets up there, he starts talking. Death, death, and I'm going. Oh my God, look at this guy. Yeah, and he keeps going and talking, and all of a sudden you get like, oh, I'm, ten people start listening, yeah. and, and he's still talking, and I'm watching it, and I said to my wife, "Would you look at this? Twenty people, thirty people. Before you knew it, he had the whole fucking place. But I watched it. Uh -huh. I I actually just watched it go from death." To killing it. And I was like, that's a pro. You know, I said, that's a pro. And I remember asking Chris Rock once, when I, I said, Chris, what's the secret of, of stand-up? What's, what's the one thing if you had to tell a stand-up comic? Because people ask me. And I go, look, I'm not a stand-up comic, but I could speak to my friends. And, and Chris says, don't be afraid of the silence. For joke bombs, yeah. keep on going. I never forgot it's, that. It, it, well, that's true. People, it's same with when you're on radio. When it gets silent, you're like, oh, what do I say? You know, yeah. uh, as you, here's my theory in comedy, in one of them. And after, and I'll tell comics right. that have been in a bit of a complaint, oh, I can't get this or my, or my manager or this club owner, this and that. I go, here's one thing that you have that they can never take from you is your creativity. All you have, your creativity, you keep creating, and and you're still in the game. Right. You can't, you can't let them or any distractions take away from what you have. You right. know, nine, nine out of, or eight out of 10 times, I'll know if something's funny. I, I can't go by the audience. They don't know. I know what's funny. That's yes, my but job. Did you ever think of something's funny and the audience just doesn't laugh? That has to happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I did a joke, da, 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 and now I finally made it work. And I talk about the movie. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Brendan Fraser won Best Oscar. The Whale. The Whale. Right. Which I thought was amazing. It was yes. a play, but I thought it was, it was very amazing. good. He was I, very good. I, I yes. thought he was great. Yes. So you have all these social warriors complaining that they didn't use a real 600-pound actor, which there's so many in Hollywood. I said, you know. Yeah, well, but, it, but that's, that's bullshit. But that's what it's called, acting. acting. Yes. He would. My God. They didn't want, they, look, they wanted somebody to act like they couldn't get up from a couch, not somebody that couldn't. No, that's the idea. Yes. If he's, if he's yeah. acting, yeah. then it ain't fucking nothing. Well, so, and I say, and so all these you know, you get these, so I can't believe, so, and I said this on stage, and in the beginning, but now I made a, Dove Soap came out, and said, I can't believe they didn't use a real actor, this and that, I'm going, who the fuck, you're Dove Soap, what are you getting involved in this yeah. for, then it hit me, Dove Soap likes fat people, because they use more soap, you know, oh, right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. so that's why they're getting involved in yeah, it, yeah, no, but, that's but the stay, idea, stay out of, to me, all these corporate look. If you're Coca Cola, your job is to be better than Pepsi. I don't give a 
what you think about yeah. about a movie or social right. issue right. or exactly. your political views. You have one job to be better than Pepsi. Right. That's it. Just yeah. Everybody yeah. gets too caught up yeah. in this fucking yeah. stuff. Man. Yeah. You know what I say? Live and let live. That's a good Just right? leave people alone. You're not bothering me. Yeah. You're not telling me how to live my life. Fine. Live your life, whatever it is. Whatever you want to do, yeah. live your life. And this is America. I'm okay with yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah. But so I'm just like, so Rich, if somebody wants to come and see you, where where can they? Tell me your podcast and how they yeah. can come and see you. Uh, well, after this, I'll be playing golf at some course, Centennial. Uh, nice. <laughs> and uh, our podcast is My Wife Hates Me. It's everywhere. But I think we're moving to a new network. You right. know what? You want? Here's two things. You can, Go to richvoss.com for all my dates. But- our movie is Women Aren't Funny. This is a great documentary. It's a comedy documentary. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's not one of these, oh. I want to see that. It's Women it's Aren't Women Funny. Women Aren't Funny. My wife directed. It's it's really, yeah. I mean, we made this, I don't know, somebody, everybody said, don't do it. We did it. I our own money. She must have a pet peeve about that because everybody thinks that only yeah. men could be funny. Yeah. Well, that's the whole concept exactly, of this. right, yeah. Yeah, Women Aren't Funny. Rita Rudner, everybody's in this thing. And uh, go to YouTube if you want to watch the best roast. It's free on YouTube. It's called Voss Roast. Voss Roast. V O S Roast. Free. Right. It's the best roast you'll ever. I'm not lying. If I'm lying, yeah. you know, I have, I'm not gaining anything because right, it's right, free. Right, right. Voss Roast or Women Aren't Funny. That's Women Aren't Funny is still on uh, iTunes or somewhere. It's fine. I want to see that. Yeah, it's fine. Because five I always yeah. talk about that about women. Yeah. I think women are funny. I mean, yeah. to me, my favorite. To me, my favorite woman comic was uh, Joan Rivers. She was great. Joan Rivers used to make me fucking laugh. She was great. Yeah, was I met great. her a bunch of times, and she was very sweet. Yeah. And I would go see her when I was in playing in Vegas. And, uh, you know, she's funny. She's, there's, funny's funny. It's not male, female, white, black. Funny is funny to me. I yeah. love all, to me, the my favorite type of comedy. I mean, I like all comics. But my favorite is comics that talk from here, not here. Like when you you learn something, you walk out, go, oh, I know that person. I know that, I know right. that person, and that's yeah. just my favorite. And there's right. certain ones, but I just like funny, good I like, comics. I like to learn something. That's yeah. When I'm when I'm watching a comic, yeah. And I like a comic who takes something and puts it on its head and makes it funny. I like Bill yeah. Burr. Like that's why yeah. I love like Bill Burr. Bill is great. Like, yeah. I, I I just think he t says things about. I say how. How the fuck does he get away with that? And he says it, and you know what? It's hysterically funny. I remember yeah. Jerry Steinfeld said, he said, the more, I watched him once on a show, he said, the more offensive the joke is, the funnier it better be. And he was right. Yeah. And I noticed that, because if it's not funny, then it's offensive. Well, but he, Jerry's not offensive in any Oh, he's not offensive No, he's not offensive. He says that, but he's, he says that, yes. I mean, he... he I used to watch when I was starting, and I used to see him on Carson. I go, this is he's so fucking funny, funny, so very funny, guy. so fun, and always nice when I see him. I, yeah, I saw him at Collins one man show. Always oh, nice. He's got yeah. his thing, man. He, so he, he, he he he's in that lane, and he's, yeah. If you want that lane, man, he's the fucking hysterical. Very funny. There was so Absolutely. many. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah. I, I just, I, a lot I, of great comics out there. I'm I'm lucky and blessed that. I ended up in this business and the people I met. I always ask comics, was there any one comic who inspired you that you really liked? Or Well, I, 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 I there's so many growing up. I mean, yeah. like I said, when I was young, I listened to that Von Meter. Yeah. It's prior. But then when I started, I would go to clubs and see comics yeah. that aren't even in the business. And I go, man, that guy's great. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I right. just laughed. You know, and, yeah. and then, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I watched Colin, he inspired, you know, my yeah. friends inspire me. I was in Austin and I, and I watched Rogan do 45 minutes and All I right. go, oh shit, I got to get back. To, he, I would, it rejuvenated me. And I'm not just saying this because who he is, there's yeah. certain comics yeah. that I'll watch. Yeah. I don't watch that many, but there's certain ones that I'll watch yeah. for now. Like Joey Diaz is a good friend of mine. Oh. I watched Joey. Joey is like, 
You know, you know I went to go see Joey Diaz, and uh, 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 when he was in uh, Atlantic City, he invited me and my son. And I, I cannot forget the other two comics that came on before him. Then Joey came on uh, before Joe. Now, I never saw Joe do stand-up. I listened to his podcast all yeah. the time. But I never saw him do stand-up, so yeah. I didn't know what to expect. But before I get about Joe, Joey Diaz comes out. Yeah. Fucking tears it up. Yeah. I mean, to the point where I said, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Joe's coming out after this? Yeah. I said, I don't know. I never seen him do stand-up. But Joey Diaz came out and fucking ripped the place apart. Yeah. I mean, his fans are so in love with him. It's like, and I got to tell you, uh, and Joe Rogan came out. He was fucking funny, man. Well, he, he was yeah. really funny. Well, I went, okay, the guy's yeah. funny, man. Well, what I like, I mean, I know, I knew Rogan for 30 years, but Joey, I've known, we became closer friends when he moved to Jersey. Right, right. Uh, what I, Look, his stories are. I could relate. I, look, I, I mean, didn't go to that level, like, but forget it. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't go to that. I was at a different level, right? Sure. You know, I never kidnapped anybody, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. Uh, you know, so there's certain ones that inspire. I, you know, I watch them now. You know, and and you just, I don't know. The last couple of weeks or in the last month, I, I did a whatever a theater down in Virginia, yeah. and it was. I thought it was going to be horrible numbers. Right. Then turned out to be good numbers. And it right. kind of, then I went to Pittsburgh and then Austin. And it just, you know, I just put out probably six months ago my seventh album. So I'm going, ah, am I, what am I going to do? You know, seven albums is a career. And I'm going, Look at that. I'm going, what am I going to do? I go, do I do a storytelling album? Do I do another comedy album? What do I do? Because I can't oh. stagnate. I got to do something. Funny's funny, man. I got to I got to do something. Right. And then I watched certain comics. And right. I, I had some good weeks. And I go, right. well, I'm, I'm back to coming up with it. I, I got to work on my eighth album. That's what yeah. I got to do. Oh, that's great. I Listen, you just keep creating Rich's. Yeah. So if you want to see, you want to know where he's appearing, go to Rich oh. Voss. Dot com. Yeah, yeah, my website, yeah. And your wife's name again? Bonnie McFarlane. Bonnie McFarlane, and she has, does she go on the road too? She, no, she might, she's doing a comedy festival for ladies in right. Colorado. She does the stand in New York a lot. Uh, she's writing a movie. Right. She's probably going to direct. They have a, they're doing a TV show on her in Canada based on her life. She grew up in Canada on a farm. Oh, uh, wow. So they're doing a the TV show nice. on her book. She wrote a book. I haven't finished it. I still. She wrote it seven <laughs> years ago. Eh? You know, right. uh, I still have two chapters. But uh, yeah, they're doing a show based on her life. So right. she's created. Right. She's got a lot of heat. And the movie that they should see, Women. What are, women Aren't Funny. Women it's, Aren't we made Funny, this, which is not true. Yeah, uh, I want to. Yeah. I want to see that movie. It's a great doc. I'm telling you, already every comic, you're going, wow, how did they get it? You know, yeah. we did everything ourselves. We made a movie that went to Netflix. So you wrote it, she, produced it, shot it, did, and put it on Netflix. Yeah. It's, well, I, I mean, editing. That. We had eighty hours of film that we brought down to an hour and a half. So it was like a documentary. Almost. Yeah, it's a comedy oh, it's a documentary. documentary. A comedy oh, doc. I, got, I love documentary. You'll, I got to see it. Yeah, watch it from beginning to end. It's, I'm going. No, I'm watching it. <laughs> women aren't. Watch it. Women aren't funny. Well, Rich, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, I, listen, this you're, was you're, this you're, was a dream. No, no, man, <laughs> no, no. Good. You're funny, man, yeah, and uh, no. I wish you and your wife the best. Thanks, folks. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget chazpalmetary.com if you want to come and see my show. Don't forget June 4th, the Richfield Playhouse, Richfield, Connecticut. June 11th at the Paramount in Huntington, the Paramount Theater in Huntington. And June 23rd at the Dover... Dover Delaware, Theater. At the Rollins Theater. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week.